The Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Carrie Harris. And what a weekend it was for Crimson Tide Athletics. Wins in basketball, baseball, softball, and gymnastics. A blowout win in hoops, a no-hitter in baseball, and a series sweep for softball. It was the first all-sports undefeated weekend for Alabama since 2011. And good evening, everybody. Welcome in to Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week by Buffalo Rock. Ice cold Diet Pepsi. Oh, I'm nervous about yours. <laughs> hey, look at that. It rolled out on the set, go. but... I got it so good and cold, it's not going to spew. If it had been warm, it might have shot. But instead, just right. Alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com, I am Gary Harris. Rodney, did you have as good a weekend as Alabama Athletics had? Uh, yeah, I did. I had well, a great good. weekend. For one thing, I can't complain. For one thing, you enjoyed all the wins. Hmm? I did. <laughs> I sure did. We got a variety of topics tonight, and we'll start with men's basketball. A great ending to the regular season on Saturday with a blowout win over, Mar over uh, Mike Anderson in Arkansas on Senior Day. Now the Tide heads into the SEC tournament on Thursday against LSU with some momentum. Rodney, is there a chance in your mind that Alabama, playing well right now, can make a run? In this tournament. Well, I mean, you know, again, you never know. I certainly think, Gary, we talked about it all season when everyone was complaining. Let's see how it all plays out. And, you know, we, Alabama's come up with some big wins down the stretch. Uh, certainly the Arkansas game was, uh, you, you would think, a confidence builder. They played well from start to finish. And, you know, Gary, anything can happen once you get into March. You know how that works. Blowout win at home over Auburn, blowout win over Arkansas, and a close, tough loss at Kentucky, a game with the about four and a half minutes to go, Alabama was right there. They just couldn't generate offense down the stretch. But they are playing better. And here's Anthony Grant talking about why. Finally, a three goes down. The numbers are saying we're playing a lot better from a defensive standpoint in terms of uh, being able to, to, to limit our opponent's opportunities, uh, which is creating opportunities for us on the offensive end. And uh, I think anytime you can you can get into a flow offensively, uh, that certainly helps. I think winning helps, uh, creates confidence and, and momentum. So uh, I think obviously, you know, those are probably two things that probably stand out to me. And Rodney, let's talk about the lone scholarship senior. Isaiah Wilson, a walk-on, also a senior. But Trevor Relliford on Saturday during senior day closed it out like he's done throughout his career here with a great showing, 24 points, named first team All-SEC today. Ronnie, he's been one of the, probably the top ten players in Alabama history. I think the fact that Alabama has not won a NCAA tournament game during his tenure probably has hurt him in terms of publicity. But what a player he's been. All, fifth on the uh, all-time scoring mark. He passed Jerry Har uh, Harper for fifth on Saturday. He's the all-time leading stills leader at Alabama. You know, you think about how they struggle, but without Relaford, where would they be? Well, I can tell you what, the fans love him. There's no doubt about it, Gary. I know on TiderInsider.com after the game Saturday, you know, the fans were talking about what a thrill it's been to watch him and, you know, how he's put everything into what he's done. Uh, his effort, you know, has been, uh, you know, relentless effort throughout his career. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of the fans certainly respect, uh, you know, his career. You know, Rodney, here's a six-foot foot point guard who can get to the basket, shoots the three, shooting over 50% from the field. Think about that. A point guard, over 50% from the field. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Defensively, we told you about the steals. He's the leading assist man on the team. But on Saturday, a milestone. As we said, he passed Jerry Harper to become the fifth leading scorer in Crimson Tide men's basketball history. I'm blessed to be in that position. I never thought coming here that I'd be top five in scoring at, at least. And, um, and, and to do that, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm blessed. And, I'm just thankful for my teammates finding me and coach from day one believing me and giving me the confidence to, to go out there and play like that every night. And here are the impressive numbers for Relaford on your screen. We mentioned them, but just, just take a look. Steals first, games played tied for first, games started second. These are all time in Alabama history. Scoring fifth, free throw fifth. I mean, as I said, I, I said this on Chris Stewart's radio show on Friday. He has to go down as a top 10 player in Alabama basketball history. All right, let's switch gears now to football. Tomorrow, a very important day for a number of former Crimson Tide players. It's pro day over at the indoor facility. Rodney, who do you think, well, I know they all need a good showing, but who's, you know, a couple players think about 
and talk about guys that could really help them. Well, again, tomorrow. Gary, I just think, you know, when you, when you have the opportunity, you have to take advantage of it. And, again, I know that some guys have when done that you know, through again. the years here. I know that, uh, you know, when, when you kind of look down the list, maybe a guy like a Kenny Bell, for example, you know, a guy that's had an outstanding career here, was a fifth-year senior, has great speed. You know, he's a guy that certainly, you know, run a really good 40 time. He should because we know about his speed. John Fulton's a guy, you know, Gary, again, and, and we're talking about some guys that maybe could help themselves. Uh, you know, here he played for four years. He didn't really ever secure a starting spot, you know, but he, but he has some skills, and it'll be interesting to see see exactly how he fares. And, you know, how about Kevin Norwood in the combine? I mean, I think he really helped himself. He ran a really great 40 time. He was timed under 4-5. Uh, you know, we know about his big playability in terms of, especially in the big game. So, you know, he's a guy that I think has already, you know, kind of helped himself. And, and you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see how Anthony Steen, what all, I don't know what all he's going to participate in, but I think he's been one of the more unsung guys in terms of that offensive line, you know, the great line that they had two years ago. But, you know, the, he's one of the strongest players to ever come through here. Here's a look at uh, a mock draft. You see HaHa Clinton Dix. Predicted to go in the first round somewhere between 13 and 20. C.J. Mosley's stock is dropping some, not all because of him. Inside linebackers, just not as much in demand anymore in the NFL. But he uh, could help himself tomorrow. Cyrus Quanjo, despite some knee difficulties at the Combine, still picked to go either in the first or second round, a first-day pick. McCarron could go in the third. Other guys there looking to go uh, in the fourth round and later possibly as free agent signees. But Alabama, again, will be very active when it comes uh, to the NFL draft later on this spring. Well, much more coming up on Tider Insider TV, including the latest Alabama commitment for the 2015 class. It's already filling up. Plus, we're less than a week from spring practice. In fact, it gets started this weekend. Next up, a look at the tight end position. How much will O.J. Howard touch the ball this coming season? We'll discuss next. And we'll be taking your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information there on your television screen on how you can get in touch with us. And I have people tell me all the time that they just try to call in and can't get through. Call now. Call now. And uh, maybe you can get through. We'll put you on hold, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Let's take a break. You're watching the uh, show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, the one, the only, Tider Insider Television presented by Buffalo Rock. We touched on it earlier, but what a weekend for the Alabama baseball team. The Tide swept Mississippi Valley State. Now, in all fairness, Mississippi Valley State is over 15 on the season. But listen to this, Alabama did not allow a single run in any of the three games. That's three shutouts in three games. Also, the Tide pitching staff combined for a 9 inning no-hitter on Saturday, the first 9 inning no-hitter for Alabama baseball since 1942. They play Sanford tonight and start a home SEC series against Kentucky on Friday. Well, let's get back to uh, TITV and let's talk football recruiting. Rodney, as we have said, and you know better than anybody, it never stops and Alabama last week picking up what I think is a very nice commitment for the class of 2015, an in-state product. Anthony Jennings, one of these guys, these quick twitch pass rush type that uh, is, is got a lot of good football ahead of him, going to get bigger and stronger, but already a very active athlete. Well, he had a really good year last year. He had 171 tackles, I believe it was, 34 tackles for losses, seven sacks. So he had a really good year, and I think he's going to really have a big senior year. He's a guy that can play. You know, defensive end, you know, possibly Jack linebacker, though I think he, he'll probably be a defensive end. He could play tight end as well. I mean, he's got that versatility. He played it some in high school. You may even see him here on the video making this catch. And uh, so he's an outstanding prospect, 6'3", about 257. And, uh, again, I think his better days are ahead of him. You know, got that motor, too. You know who he kind of reminds me of? Because I saw this kid in high school is, is the Auburn, former Auburn defensive end, D. Ford. Yeah, that maybe type so. Of, that type, kind of a tweener size-wise. but uh, He's now, a little bigger granted, coming out. Yeah, I'm not saying he's going to turn out to be as good as D. Ford, but you do like what you see from him. Dadeville High School, not a huge high school there in central Alabama, but uh, this is a guy to keep an eye on. And, again, it all starts with in-state recruiting and goes from there. Well, spring football practice gets going on Saturday. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. We're continuing our spring practice previews. Only two more position groups to go. Tonight, we look at the tight end position. Rodney, what's it look like for Bobby Williams' group in the Lane Kiffin offense? Bobby Williams, the position coach. Could there be some changes for the tight ends under new offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin? Well, I do. I, I think so. I think when you look at it, you know, Lane Kiffin's always liked to throw to his tight end. Remember Luke Stocker? Absolutely. Catch he made you know, do I remember yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so he likes to use his tight ends, and you know, when you look at O.J. Howard, I mean, this guy's obviously a very gifted talent. I think he's going to be a you know star before he leaves here, and I think o, uh, Lane Kiffin's going to help him get there. You know, and Brian Vogler's obviously back there. You see him scoring a touchdown. He's been around for a while. He's turned into a solid blocker. Harrison Jones is back. Uh, Malcolm Fashan, Fashan. I mean, he's a guy that you know when you look at him physically, Fashan looks like a guy that can line up and be one of those inline tight ends and a really good blocker. So. Hopefully it's, you know, time that he comes around. Kurt Freitag's another guy that's been around now a couple of years. Was a redshirt freshman on this past season, or this past season. And then, you know, as we look forward, Ty Flanoy Smith, a junior college guy that will come in in the fall, but again, or in the summer. But all of these guys, I think, Gary, when you look at them, going to be really interesting to watch. And, hey, how about Brandon Green? Remember him, the former left tackle? Sure really had a role last year as a blocker. Going to be interesting to watch him this spring as well. So a good group of tight ends, good numbers there, depth at that position for Bobby Williams and Lane Tiffin. Next week, we'll wrap the spring previews up with an in-depth look at the quarterback competition. We'll have some spring video for you by then, too, so we'll get a chance to actually see the quarterbacks out on the field working with the aforementioned Lane Kiffin. So look forward to that. Next on Tider Insider TV, a great weekend for Alabama softball. Plus, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information on the screen. Interact with Tider Insider TV right now. Go ahead and give us a call, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Email us, TITV at WVUATV.com, or reach us on Twitter, hashtag Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back with the show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, the one, the only Tider Insider TV. Stay with us. The Alabama softball team got the SEC season off to, as Gene Stallings would say, the recommended start <laughs> by sweeping South Carolina at home over the weekend. Pat Murphy's crew showed off its depth and its talent, and in doing so, they moved back up into the top ten in the national polls. All right, Rod, you ready to take some phone calls? Sure. Let's get it started by going over to Cordova and talking to John Mack. John Mack, welcome into the program. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, my question is, is um, who will be the two starting quarterbacks this year in the 8A game for Alabama? All right, John, Max, Rodney, we've talked a little bit about this. I got a similar question last week. Uh, my guess is, and again, I don't know, they got to go through the spring. Coach Saban will make that decision. I think, you know, Blake Sims will probably start for one of the teams, and then, you know, maybe Alec Morris, maybe not. I mean, I, you know. I mean, who knows? See, I right? mean, it, it really, it's really difficult to tell again. You know, we know we know one thing. You've got Blake Sims. You've got Alec Morris. You've got Parker McLeod. You've got Cooper Bateman. You've got David Cornwell. The question is, you know, how much will David Cornwell participate this spring, the incoming freshman from Oklahoma? And, you know, you look at him, Gary, he's got a lot of tools. I mean, he's 6'5", he's 235 pounds. I mean, he's got a strong arm. He can really run. He is coming off knee surgery. He's limited high school action. You know, his senior year, he – you know, hurt that knee and had to go through surgery. But it'll be uh, really fun to see if he gets to participate. And we'll remind you again that Jacob Coker, the Florida State transfer, will not go through spring. So he's not a factor, at least for now. All right, let's go uh, over and talk to our buddy Plato. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. Good evening. Hey, how are you? Um, with the graduation of both of our kicking specialists, uh, I would assume uh, Adam Griffith would be heir apparent for the place kicking job but who do you see on campus right now that uh, may uh, push for the putting putting job well that's a good question you know I'm not really sure exactly plateau who is going to uh, you know fill that role left by Cody Mandel we'll say this obviously Alabama had a good recruiting year in terms of landing one of the top punters in the country JK Scott out of Denver Mullen Colorado and also keep an eye on Hoover uh, incoming freshman uh, Tuck Borey, he was a 6A class, uh, super class, 6A all-state punter. And, you know, Gary, he's got a lot of talent. And, you know, people say, well, you know, you sign one of the top punters, but you got a guy walking on. Cody Mandel was a walk-on when Alabama signed Jay Williams. Jay Williams never punted. Cody Mandel turned into a star punter. So, he, really, he really did. Yeah. So keep an eye on Tuck Borey, too. I think that's a guy maybe some people, you know, haven't heard of that could be a factor at some point. Yeah, watch tape of Mandel as a sophomore compared to a junior and senior. I mean, he got so much better. All right, let's take an email, Rodney, from Joe and Hoover. Will Bo Scarborough qualify? And understand you've actually, you know, got some updated information well, on what I, he needs I, to do to, I, to, to, yeah, get, to get ready. And I think, Gary, when you look at what Bo Scarborough has to do, he's certainly within striking distance. I know there's been some reports out on the Internet that, you know, he was a long way off. I really don't think he's a long way off. I think if he does what he has to do, he's got a really good shot of making it. Now, 
you know, again, grades are hard to predict. We've seen guys that we thought were, were shoe-ins to make it, and, you know, something happened. They didn't make it through the clearinghouse. And, and we've seen guys that maybe were thought were long, you know, uh, long shots who did make it. So, but again, when you're talking about Bo Scarbutt, we think he has a, has a pretty decent shot. All right. Thanks for the phone calls and the emails. Next on TI TV, another historic night inside Coleman Coliseum for the gymnastics program. We'll catch you up on the latest record-breaking evening for Sarah Patterson and company. And coming up, more of your phone calls and emails. So email us, tweet at us, or call us. We want to hear from you, and uh, you're a big part of the program, and we welcome your interaction when we return to Tider Insider TV here on WVUA. Alabama gymnastics was about as close to perfect as you can come in that sport on Friday night against Stanford. The ladies posted a school record score of 198.250 to pick up a victory. That included a perfect 10 on vault for DeAndre Milliner. They'll try and extend their winning streak against Auburn this Friday night at Coleman Coliseum to 109 in a row. Let's get right back to the phones. Rodney, our buddy Charles in Silicaga is with us. Hey, Charles, what's going on? Yeah, I want to know what A.J. McCarron pushed the uh, quarterbacks in the spring game to, you know, for better playing time. You know, I, Charles, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he'll give them advice if they ask. I think right now his focus probably, Rod, is on getting ready for the NFL draft and his future. And as far as coaching him in the, in the A-Day game, I don't think you'll see that uh, if he's here. Uh, you know, I'm sure he'll be involved some. But coach is coach and former players, you know, go play somewhere else or, or maybe help out in some other capacity. But I think he'll give them some tips if they want them, but I don't think he'll be actively coaching. Uh, I think they got a, they have a pretty good quarterbacks coach right now, Lane Kiffin, and I, you know I agree with you, Gary. I don't think he'll have any input. All right, let's get to an email, Rod, and this is from uh, Thomas and Trustful. Will DJ Petway play defensive end or linebacker? Good question, because I'm telling you, at about 260 pounds, Rodney, he's extremely athletic. Uh, played with his hand down. The first time that he was here, but there, is there any chance they might stand him well, up some? you know, in the bowl practices, uh, I said the bowl practices, leading up to the Notre Dame game for the BCS championship game, they did work DJ some at the Jack linebacker spot. Now, he was a defensive end. He's about 6'4 now, close to it, uh, 265, 270. He's a guy that I think is going to be a defensive end. Here you see him coming off the corner. That's in the national championship game for the junior colleges last year. And he had 11 and a half sacks. I think he's going to be a terror this year. I think he's going to have a great year. Uh, make a significant impact for Alabama as, as a defensive end. All right, Rod, uh, good answer there. Let's take another phone call. Let's go over to Hoover. And uh, who we got, BJ? Phil. Hey, Phil, how are you? You're on the air at TITV. Hey, Gary? Yes, sir, you're on with us. Go ahead. Okay, Gary, my question is uh, our offensive line coach. Right, Mario Cristobal, yes. Is he on? Have you got me now? Okay, this is Bill Vidal from Hoover, Alabama, okay. and I was wondering about our offensive line coach. Uh, last year was the worst offensive line coach we've ever had, uh, leaving Eric Quanjo and number 71 played off of the whole year. I was wondering if it's possible that we can get us a new offensive line coach. Well, Bill, I, I tell you, I, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I, I don't think that was the worst offensive line play that – that I've ever seen. I, they did have some issues at times, but they were replacing some guys. Mario Cristobal has got a great track record. And, um, you know, I think they're going to be more consistent up front. Again, this was his first season. Had to replace some starters. I don't know how you feel about it, Rodney. I don't want to speak for you, but I, I think Mario Cristobal is a top-notch coach. Some starters? I mean, how yeah, about yeah. some really great yeah, starters? Great I mean, you're talking, Max, Bill, Bill let's be honest. Let's, let's give Coach Cristobal a little break here. We're talking about three of the greatest offensive linemen that ever played here. You're talking about Barry Jones, maybe the most decorated offensive lineman to ever play here. You're talking about, uh, you know, on the right side, D.J. Fluker, first-round draft choice. One of the best offensive guards to ever play here would be Chance Warmack, but another first-round draft choice. So, I mean, he had a lot of guys to replace. I mean, this wasn't an easy job. I mean, it was his first, you know, spring last year, and, you know, so he had some talented guys to replace it. All we, we talked about this before the last season. We said that, you know, one thing you have to do with the offensive line, it takes time for those guys to gel and come together. Now, again, I mean, Cyrus Quanjo, he played a little bit beat up. I mean, I think you have to keep that into, take that into account when you're assessing, you know, his play. And, again, Ari Quanjo was another guy that, you know, he was coming off two bad knees, Gary. People thought that maybe he would never contribute. So, you know, his, his contribution last year was probably much better than anyone ever expected. You know, again, will things kind of change up this spring? 
they possibly could. I think Alabama has a lot of very talented young offensive linemen. They have a lot coming in. Uh, fortunately, Cameron Robinson is already in school and will uh, compete for that left tackle spot that Quanjo vacated. So, uh, Bill, I, I think better days are ahead in terms of the offensive line, but I, I certainly would not be down on, on Coach Cristobal. All right, good answer, Rodney. Next up, we're wrapping up the show with a presidential welcome for one tied team. Stick around for that. Thanks for the phone calls and the emails and the text. Stay with us. Tighter Insider TV will return right after this. Here's the look ahead at the Alabama athletic events coming up. Tonight, you can go check out the baseball team, softball teams at home as well. We'll have those highlights coming up for you on the news at 10. Saturday, spring football gets going. We mentioned gymnastics uh, on Friday night against Auburn, so another busy week for Alabama sports. The football team at UA, no stranger to the White House, but Monday, it was the men's golf team and their opportunity to make a visit to Washington. President Obama met with the squad and even asked Coach Jay Sewell for tips on how to get out of the sand. <laughs> how about that? Good stuff for the men's golf team. They won the national championship last yeah. year. All right, that's going to do it for our time tonight. You'll notice that Rodney and I are outfitted, as always, from the locker room in the original elephant wear. The locker room is a Tuscaloosa tradition for 50 years now, located on the University Strip. You can't miss them. Beautiful clothes inside or you can shop online as well if that's easier for you so check out the locker room and also check out tighter insider tv anytime on our website wvuatv.com it'll be available later for rodney orr and our entire ti tv crew i'm gary harris thanks for watching have a good night everybody